Hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. About a month and a half ago, I did a video titled Red Dead Redemption on the Table. It was an unboxing video of Bantam West with Jan Begas, and now we're bringing you a preview because this game has finally, officially launched on Kickstarter today, link in the top of this video description, and before everyone gets their tassels in a tizzy, this isn't a paid video, it's not a sponsored video, this is a game that is doing some really incredible things when it comes to an open world storytelling adventure, and I'm excited about it. I'm excited to cover it, I'm excited about and I have a soft spot for indie <laughs> designers doing everything they can to create something unique and good. And that's exactly what this game is. Now, we will be going through some of the reasons why this game may or may not be right for you. In fact, from the point of that unboxing video to now, the game has changed a substantial amount. Yep. With new card mechanics, new developments, uh, separating and, and opening up the battle system in a unique way, but all of these things are adding complexity and depth and more open world choices to a game that was already a lot to tackle. And so now, if the idea of establishing and then burning down a neighbor's cabin, mining for gold, getting uh, immune to frostbite, going to the casino, robbing the bank, fighting and uh, capturing various threatening beasts and creatures, doing your very best to hire a mount, buy weapons, uh, knock kill someone people. out in the park, kill people, Bury hire... Them. Rob their graves, Rab steal, steal some of the stuff off of their body. If you want to be exploring the tundra to, to uh, collect, collect and mine, become a logger. The wetlands. Uh, go through the wetlands and establish herbs or hunt wild beasts. If you want to pick locks and uh, open up or Crack. store the silver that you have in the cabin that you've established, uh, all these little narrative pieces and tropes are things that you can actually do. There's so much going on here and there's so many different game. pathways. There is a ton of different pathways. This is going to be an open world, western style game set in the world and universe of Bantam. Bantam Planet, like I said, it's coming from a indie designer who is doing I'm impressed. a remarkable job. Uh, I'm gonna set this off down to the side. We have to start this off the responsible way. With some flavor text. With a little bit of flavor text. And then we're gonna give you an overview, the highs, the lows, the general concept of what's happening here and you mentioned as you were setting this up to have us do this preview, you kind of want to do a gameplay on the camera. Yeah. And so... It looks really cool. There's... And the Wild West is usually not my favorite theme. However, this might be changing it for me. This, the artwork, the aesthetic, everything here. I was setting it up and I was like, that looks really cool. I want to go for those weapons. That looks really cool. I want to kill people there. I want to set up cabins. Well, I want to burn. And we've played Western Legends together. The... Zombie side? No, Western Legends. So that's so Dead or, Undead or Alive is going to be the Western style zombie side. Right, we that played was what that. I remembered. Western Legends is going to be kind of the slightly more open world by. Uh, oh right, yeah, we played uh, that Western style game <laughs> where you're doing. You were so chaotic in that game. Yeah, this is going to be kind of going head to head with that, and so there's two options that I'm interested in doing potentially during this campaign, and if there's enough engagement on this video, so like, subscribe, comment down below. Uh, we might look into doing a Play This Not That on Western Legends. Okay. We might look into doing a gameplay of each. There's a lot yeah. of things that I want to explore, but what I can say, the surface level is, Western Legends is going to be less open world, but more straightforward when it comes to kind of the approach, the Euro nature of this. Mm -hmm. Bantam West is going to be way more open world, but also way more complex and kind of hard to sink your teeth into. Understanding all the things you can do, is in some ways a limiting factor. So if you want to see that displayed, engage with this video, and we'll kind of run it off of that. Welcome, weary traveler, to an immersive simulation for two to four players set in the frontier. Starting with nothing but sand in your pockets, you embark on a perilous venture in search of fame and fortune in the small town of Gallo Springs. Your immediate goals are to find a source of income, acquire land, and protect the homestead. Eventually, you will build small-time enterprises into your own corporation and become a hero of the frontier. Along the way, be on the lookout for rival players who would see to your undoing by burning your cabins down, killing your followers, and stealing your hard-earned wealth. So, as you dive into this game, you're going to be doing exactly what the flavor text is saying, establishing and looking for a way to secure income and start scoring points. The object of the game is going to be collect as many stars as possible until you cross either the short, medium, or long-term game, which is going to be 5, 10, 15, and then 20, 20. respectively. Yep. 
Uh, those stars are going to come from a lot of different areas, and I won't be able to go through them all here, but, you know, recruiting a mount, buying a horse, building a cabin, purchasing a legendary item, killing mastering an, an endeavor, hiring raiders, potentially killing some raiders, hunting down and fighting with your opponents or your competitors, establishing cabins throughout the map, resolving different uh, event mm -hmm. cards, and going on your own personalized quests, which are unique to every character in their own journey or their own story. For instance, you have burning down cabins and lockpicking. Yep. I have uh, get a kill while away. I'm going to be hunting for beasts with the Beast Slayer and looking for uh, heads to mount on Pike for the bandits that are currently wanted. There is a lot of different paths to victory here. And when you come into the game, every turn is going to resolve kind of the same. You're going to be getting grit. You're going to be getting some Radcliffe Coffee Co. Uh, <laughs> little tokens, and those will be your action points that you can spend. You can then spend those to move, engage in a, po a combat, uh, build or interact with tokens that are out here on the map, and then come back into the city. This is going to be the wilderness. Yes. The areas that you're exploring, harvesting resources from going through uh, various kind of tests and also dealing with bandits or creatures or monsters or cabins, yeah. whatever's out there. There's like a mountain lion over here, there's yep. a bear over there, two bandits there's some bandits least. on the board. And then over here in town, you're going to be dealing with all of the different classic buildings. You can go up to the gunsmith to get some weapons, you can go to the outpost, and it looks like... The outpost is going to be where you're heads. selling, you're going to be selling <laughs> the resources that you've gotten. So you can trade in like a bear pelt for some money. Okay, that'll be up your alley. Mounts where you can get another horse to ride or to... Well, not another horse to ride. Mounts where you get a horse get to ride. Which is going to increase your and movement your saddles, and your storage, your saddles, everything storage. like that. And then you can go to Melissa's Inn, who... It's a haven. Miss B's haven. I this believe. is going to be where you mount heads on the wall, either turning in your wanted posters wanted. or establishing great game that you've caught. Obtaining some riders or that will help can... you along the way. The riders then you can kill later on. Well, I mean, if you want to. If that's you decide you don't like it. That's the most exciting part. I want to, I want to <laughs> You want to betray your own team I of do. people? I okay, do. that seems to make sense. But then you also have other areas here. You have the town hall, you have the station, you have the bank, which you can rob. You have the saloon, the jail, and the doctor, where you'll be sent if you get captured. Stables, trading posts, gunsmith. and the gunsmith up there on the top. You're going to be maneuvering around, taking actions to resolve whatever objective you're going for, and also potentially showing up in different zones and facing off or fighting with your opponents. The fighting system in this game is going to be based off of a hand of cards. There's going to be a bit of deck building uh, or deck construction throughout this. Every time you get a new uh, skill set, for instance, buying a weapon will add a card into your little deck of cards. Getting a uh, ally will add their own special unique Speaking of skill art. sets, you also have these skills on top of your board that yep. you can become more proficient in. And then you, I believe, slide them up, like logging yeah, so and foraging and hunting and mining. And you were telling me that the mining prevents you from getting frostbitten the more advanced you get on so it. So the more, the more advanced you get on each of these core uh, core elements is going to give you another boon, potentially also, again, adding cards into your combat deck. So this little deck of cards is going to be how you engage in battle. You're going to be building it and establishing your own fighting style throughout the course of the game, and then it'll be a head-to-head. -head. Draw up a hand of cards, play down the one you want to do, like a block card going head-to-head -head against a... Block card! Another block card. Uh, or a sneak, a brawl, a tackle. sneak and cover, a tackle... Brawl. You'll be able to Block. do your best to run away, cause damage, inflict pain, steal resources from the other player, or do some sneaky things. For instance, if I grab one of these here, I have something like the Obsidian uh, Obsidian Rites. These are going to allow you to do a ton of damage. They're going to allow you to add bleed to the effect, and they can also be used to do things like break locks or open up a door. I want a brass set of knuckles for me. Seems reasonable. Yes, seems it seems like the, it would accentuate the brawl if I and, can just punch with some knuckles. And so you'll be moving around, engaging in combat, doing a little bit of deck building when it comes to your personalized combat deck, and everything you're doing is working towards those stars that you're trying to accomplish. Can I tell them about my own personal character so we and have, objectives? We have with us our own personal characters, and I'm not sure if there's actually flavor text in this rulebook or not. You go ahead and talk about your objectives and your character. I'm going to see if there's flavor text for each one of them. Well, I'm going to introduce my character. Her name is Mika Man killer or cool water and she is a thief she likes to pickpocket so her two main objectives she has burn them burn them down and crack the code so burn them down is set fire to the frontier and watch it burn successfully burn down a cabin then immediately flip a spent matches tile and place it in an open slot the burned cabin must be located on a terrain tile matching the symbol on the back of the spent matches tile 
All other slots must be filled before the final slot. Perk, when you place the fourth and final tile, you receive a fifth notary point. Yeah, I have uh, over here track down bait and then I found some more that I wanna read. So uh, track down bait and hunt for legendary beasts. To spawn a beast, you must be in the terrain type specified below the plaque. Spend one grit, discard the number of resources listed as bait and roll the die. One to three, the beast spawns one acre away and attacks you. Four to six, the beast spawns two acres away but doesn't attack. If the beast is defeated, the token is flipped and placed on its plaque. The beast must spawn with your, in your line of sight in any direction. If the beast is not defeated, by the end of your turn, it disappears and must be spawned again. Beasts always spawn with full vigor. Perk, once earned, heads can be sold at Rita's Outpost for the price listed on the token. And so... We have our own objectives, and we start it's getting- It's not only dice rolling that you're going to do, you're going to have dice mitigation, as you were saying, mm -hmm. that you can help mitigate your dice so that you don't feel a little helpless with, sometimes dice can feel a little there's, random. There's, dice can add a bit of randomness into a game, but there's very little randomness when it comes to knowing how challenging an event will be yeah. and whether or not you want to choose to engage with that challenge. And as we start crossing these different locations, you're going to be getting other uh, special pathways or journeys that you can take. Now, this game also has a variety of different scenarios. Uh, and I have- I saw five or six at least? I noticed, I don't have the backstory for every one of our characters right now. Like I'm playing Levi Mercer, the Marauder, born 17th of March, 2037, uh, from Hemlock City Midland, last seen in the jail. And this is his setup and uh, standard things. But there's going to be five different, right now, five different scenarios or cores that you can set up. These are going to include uh, a sequence of different town events, different resources that are available, different characters that are playing. They're going to potentially introduce day and night boards. And the different scenarios will also take a different amount of time and you can have a shorter game, you can have a longer game that's more complex. Some of these are the night scenarios, yeah. which look really cool. Blue is just my color. And so there's five core ones. There's of course the introductory one and then they get more and more complex. I just chose a bit of flavor the text from dealt. the hand you're dealt The difficulty is medium. It can take two to three hours. Your starting score is three notoriety and your winning score is 15, which in a scale from five to 20, mm -hmm. that's pretty far along. The hand you're dealt. No one knows how the cards will fall, but in life, you must play the hand you're dealt. It's been quite a few months now, and you've just now gained a foothold in Gallo Springs. You've checked off every task on your to-do list. You are no longer just a stranger in town. You've made a name for yourself. Now you, your trusty steed, and the rusty iron on your hip are going to carve a path forward. It's high time to set your sights on some long-term goals. You've had a few plans in your back pocket for some time now, and now you have a chance to make them a reality. The first thing you must do is pick your next pursuit. Are you going to dig for treasures, hunt legendary beasts, craft artisan goods from raw materials, recruit highly trained and specialized individuals to your crew, or betray them? The choice is yours, and no one is going to write your story for you. So there's a lot to talk about and a lot to go over here. The other new thing that I haven't even had the chance Met to dig deck. into yet, because again, this is the second prototype of this that has arrived, <laughs> and things have been changing every stage Along of the way, way. getting more refined, more play-tested, and, and tweaking to make it the best game possible. There's now a whole set of event cards and event stacks, and this is a ridiculous amount. Each one has some flavor text on it. Are you going to read one? I mean, yeah, let's both let's both choose one and decide which one. Oh, okay, yeah, that seems, that seems reasonable. I found one called Cholera. I found one Wildfire. Okay, Cholera. It's just an EPSA upset stomach. You reassure yourself, as the local shops begin to close and the pine boxes start stacking high, you realize this ain't no common cold. The local well was contaminated with cholera. Of all the people who rely on the well for water, only the lucky ones survive the infection. Roll. One to two, two minus two grit for the next day only, so you lose a little bit of your action mm -hmm. points. Or three plus, you remain healthy. Yours is considered a pestilence. It is considered a pestilence. Mine's a tragedy. Okay. Wildfire. You smell that? You mumble to yourself. You lift your eyes to the horizon and see massive fume of dark smoke reaching to the sky. Your walk turns to a run. As you crest the hill, you gaze upon a wildfire fire of biblical proportions. You fall to your knees and watch as countless homesteads crumble into the all-consuming inferno. All players with at least one cabin built choose one cabin to lose, returning the cabin card and cabin piece to their player board and discarding any resources stored that within. That is absolutely brutal. That's so much fun. That is I like these. I like. Brutal. I like these tragedies. There's localities. There's events. Let's see what an event would be. Most mm, liars dice. A simple game, liars dice, involves only two players. Each player has one dice. Both players roll simultaneously, and whoever is the closest to zero wins. If there's a tie, roll again until a victor emerges. 
Each player bets $1 and the winner takes all. If a player doesn't have a dollar, then add $1 from the stack of coins on the table. And then you have qualifications for selecting the players. Mm -hmm. Whoever draws this card lays it on the table. All players close their eyes. The player counts down from three. At one, everyone opens eyes. Whoever player one is looking at is player <laughs> two. That sounds so That's much fun. fun. So there is a ton happening here, and I plan to continue diving in. I'd love to do a head-to-head -head two player. To. Uh, so let us know if you'd like to see that down below. I'd also love to do a comparison of Western Legends. This, like I said, is going to be more advanced and more in-depth. Now, I do, before we part, I do want to encourage people to go check out the Not A Review from Board Game Co., who goes over more of the specifics and more of his concerns around the game. Yeah. Because he's not quite sure if this game right now is going to be right for him. Oh. Whereas, for me, it's continuing to get deeper and deeper into the line okay. of what I'm As they doing. More, add more and more flavor text and storyline. I like line. open worlds. I like mess. Yeah. I like chaos. But... Just so you know, this is not a friendly, lightweight game. No. This is a open world modular system that is going to allow you to live in a western style universe in the ba Bantam planet space. Uh, and it doesn't apologize for that. Every change they've made has added more complexity yeah. to the game. It makes it harder to learn. It makes it harder to table. I think this is probably going to come in at like a 3.2, 3.5 on BGG once it actually arrives. But if you get into it knowing that and expecting it to be that as it continues to develop and continues to change and finally gets into our hands officially, uh, I think there's going to be an audience of people. I'm not sure how big that audience is. But I think there's going to be I'm an audience down. of people that are going to be obsessed with this when it arrives. Uh, it's making a lot of promises. It's upholding a lot of them already. And I can't wait to see what it finally kind of... Uh, what it I'm finally so does. excited oh, to dive in. And if you watch to this point, it's already fully funded on Kickstarter. Like, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. So, There's a lot more stretch goals to meet, yeah, which are really cool. There's like dual layer boards I was seeing. There's additional coins, yep. and it looks fantastic. So that's going to be a preview. Let us know if you'd like to see more or whatever else you'd like to see down in the comments down below. We will see you sometime in the future, probably tomorrow, since we do daily content now. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye. That's on me.